So I've been eyeing these uh, Eastern European Spectrum clones for uh, for a while. I finally got one. This one's called the Bice, or I guess Vute, <laughs> if you read that as Cyrillic. Um, and this one's come from Moldova. So, um, yeah. Um, computer itself, Spectrum kind of clone, as, as expected. Got a manual about uh, TV set top box, programmable TV set top, programmable television set top box or something. Um, and the power supply, so um, 220 volts, 50 hertz, uh, outputting five volts and one amp. Um, so I've pulled that apart actually because, well, uh, even though it looks like Euro slash Finnish type, um, it doesn't really fit my adapter. So I, um, I'm going to maybe rehouse this. Uh, with, if it was a Western one, I'd you know replace the capacitors and stuff. But um, obviously, part of the appeal is having the um, Soviet era components. Um, that's a transistor. So I thought maybe that was a, a like an LM three two three five volt regulator, but it's actually a transistor KT eight four six B or something. Um, interestingly, that, that's state stamp 93. Um, and the machine here is date stamped February 92, number 246. Um, well, I'll get into let me Let me get set up, I think, and I'll get into it. Okay, so I have, um, here's the joystick. Oh, I'll say the joystick, the... Uh, Manipulator manual, a Vesta EM01. Um, two control buttons. Yeah, some Daily Thompson's decathlon. Definitely. Um, so the plastic reminds me of kind of 80s Hong Kong style um, cheap crap. I've got a Somewhere I've got a red little toy organ from Tandy Radio Shack from that era, and that kind of just reminds me of the same same quality. Um, no idea why they've got those two vents up the top there. <laughs> um, there's the keyboard. Just comes out like that, um, and pretty simple, like with any. I guess that's the beauty of the of the spectrum is um you know you stick everything in the ula then all you need is basically rom um, cpu and some support logic um and you've got yourself a, a computer but interesting as i said the 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 computer says it's number 246 the motherboard says it's number 574 i think and the keyboard says it's 772 so <laughs> Um, and you look at some of the date stamps. I think you've got a you've got a ninety four on there. You've got a December ninety three on the ROM. So um, I'm ex yeah I'm guessing maybe this is early to mid ninety four. Um, yeah, so like I said, it's uh, Moldovan as far as I can tell. The uh, the manual refers to um, the SSRM, Soviet Socialist Republic of Moldova, um, SSRM, a place called Benderi, or Bender, <laughs> uh, which is in Moldova. Well, it's in a disputed area, controlled by the uh, Transnistrians at the moment, I believe. Um, but yeah, um, you know, Dnesta River. Um, yeah, and again, so this, is, this isn't actually handwritten. This is actually handwritten and then photocopied. So unless they're all number 246, I don't understand why they would photocopy this particular page. Number 246, February 92. So, yeah, again, like the components, the dates are like 94. So anyway, whatever. Um, so we've got some English in here. 
Uh, oh, something about RGB, because it does actually give you, so I'm not sure, oh, some mods here you can do. I'll have to have a look at what these, what these are to translate these. But you got, you got your pinouts here for your, basically you got your sync, video synchronization, ground and uh, GBR. Then I think this is for your cassette recording. That's your joystick and that's your power input. So yeah, because everything's DIN. Everything's DIN. So we've got five volts, DIN. It's, uh, what is it? Five, five DIN, five pin DIN, but only really two pins are used. Well, four, but they're connected to each other. Um, then we've got the joystick. Um, then we've got the cassette. Then we've got the RGB. So again, you know, you've got a seven pin there, but only five are, are actually used. So yeah, interesting, interesting choice. Guess whatever's available, but you know, if you've got a five pin there, you could use a five, whatever, whatever. Um, let's have a closer look, shall we? So here's the keyboard. The, the keys feel, you know, pretty decent to me. Um, I'm assuming, I don't know, they printed or something and then covered because this looks like, you know, like this has got a bit of dirt coming in under it so it's kind of flaked up a bit, I think, maybe. Yeah. So that's that's the key. Well, pretty simple, pretty simple. Um, you know, with things like this, I'll sometimes maybe put a header pin in there, a row of header pins, and then you have a cable you can disconnect um so yes yeah, so i believe this is the ula this is the clone of the ula um i assume this is the rom and this is either the ub880d this is their uh, clone this is their uh, domestic clone of the z80 um interesting notice the uh way they've installed the capacitors like little space invaders I thought that was different, different way of doing it. A little buzzer speaker there, I assume. Um, yeah, interesting way of doing their capacitors. It's a power input there. So yeah, all pretty, all pretty standard. I don't know what this does. <laughs> Looks like an on off, but um, when I supplied power to it, it was drawing 400 milliamps regardless. So, hmm. Underneath the board, nothing too exciting. Um, bit of patching, expansion here. Mm, interesting thing to know, apparently, is they use um, 2.5 millimeter spacing, not 2.54 millimeter, which is obviously based on Imperial units. So the, uh, just, uh, just hang on. Okay, maybe this is the easiest way to show off. So I've overlaid the UB880 with a genuine Z80. And you can see the pins initially line up, but then they slowly get out of sync. So, yeah, so they, um, they were using 2.5 mil offsets, not 2.54 mil. So... I thought, oh, okay, that's interesting. Um, apparently, they did make an export version of their clone, which did have the 2.54 millimeter. Um, <clears throat> so the same thing goes for this expansion port. You can't just stick a header on there, 2.54 millimeter header. It won't fit. So that was interesting, I thought. Let's look at the power supply. Okay, the power supply. So, so just um, this jobby outputs five volts, one amp apparently. I haven't tried it yet, um, so I've, I've taken it off. So this was connected to the uh, the pins here, and then we've got the uh, DIN. Even though the manual states four pins, um, there's only three on the DIN and five on the actual socket. Um, yeah, so I think these two are ground and that one's five volts, something like that. Anyway, so we've got this uh, big transistor here. We've got a hex, well, this is a version of a, 
um, hex inverting buffers. Um, I assume these are transformers. Um, huge capacitor there, like smoothing. Um, I assume these orange thing down here are the rectifying diodes. Um, yeah. So, yeah, where does it... Okay, so power comes in here. I think we've got the rectifying diodes here. We have this tiny strip, <laughs> tiny strip of conductor <laughs> and slowly gets bigger up, up here. Um, yeah, okay. I'm, okay I'm, look, I'm not an electronics designer, so I just thought that was very interesting how it's just such a tiny little strip just to get up to there. Um, yeah, so I've got to... So I'm going to try and keep this as original as possible. I've noticed some of these, I assume, transformer leads are very precariously, like the wire's about to break in there. So I'm going to have to have a look at that. Um, yeah, so that's that's the power supply. So what I've done in the interim is I have put it somewhere else. Let me find it. Here we go. So, I've just made up a, a quick um, power supply cable for my uh, bench power supply. And then just got it, it plugs into there. Um, but actually, really, <laughs> I might also make a USB, uh, USB to DIN cable as well. Because it's, you know, draws under an amp. Um, so I can power it off a, off a USB. Um, okay, what else? I've started making the video cables, so I was, I was hoping maybe it was similar to Amstrad and BBC Model B RGB outputs, but it's not. It's a different pinout, so I've started doing that. Um, I'm just going to run it into a into um, one of those GBS8200 uh, boards to get VGA out, so... That'll be another video. Um, here's the manual manipulator again. So again, DIN. So I'm thinking of making a um, DB9 to DIN converter to use a normal, but. Yeah, I don't know how long this would survive playing decathlon. <laughs> Maybe not too bad, actually. Uh, let me pull it apart. So here's the inside. Um, I have to say, I, okay, so this is from 90, late, early 90s. You know, some cheap joysticks he bought probably were just as <laughs> well made from the West, I guess. But you can see it's pretty simple. We've just got this um, bit of metal here that touches the contacts. We've got the two uh, little push button switches there. Um, and again goes out to a, a DIN plug. So that'll be one of the projects is to make a converter for, for DB9. So yeah, that was just a quick intro to my uh, Moldovan Byte computer. Um, yeah, interesting, interesting piece of history. Um, I'm hoping to get it. To, so I have powered it up, but I haven't got the video working yet. Um, I was drawing about 400 milliamps, so hopefully it it is doing something. I've got a tape that came with it. Um, no idea what's on it. I don't know if it's just the test program or if there's there's something else. Um, but yeah, you know all this kind of. Souvenir-y stuff. Um, yeah, oh, I wonder if this is... Um, I don't know, I don't know where it's from. It's too early to try and read Cyrillic. So, Cassetta, yeah. Okay, so that was a brief intro to the bite. Um, let's see how I go with it.